Now, we have people in the audience, uh, faces that everyone will, will know. Uh, we have two former uh, rugby internationals here and we have a former inter-county player here, Laurie. But first, I just want to go to my wider audience because most of us have played some kind of team sport in our lives or maybe our children are playing uh, or maybe we're, we're, we're uh, volunteering uh, with, a team, with a team in our, in our uh, home place. How concerned are people about concussion or the possibility of concussion? At that level, at normal level. Yeah, yourself, yeah. Just one second. Yeah, we got a mic too. Yeah, I suppose I got my first concussion when I was uh, 14, playing schools rugby. Um, and now I'm still playing rugby. Um, got my last concussion about three years ago, uh, this here on my head. Um, and it is something now that I still worry about. I do wear a scrum cap, so it's a preventative measure. But, you know, playing a contact sport like rugby, you're always taking a risk. And, and the IRFU have, you know, procedures in place to protect you and, you know, return to rugby, even if you have a suspected concussion. So procedures are in place and I do feel safe, but it's something that's you're always worried about. Yeah, it's a risk you're willing to take, obviously, if you're still playing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But okay. it's, uh, you know, the love of the game. OK, uh, yourself at the back there, just we'll get the mic to you. Yeah, I, I think we should be encouraging our young children, our young boys and girls to participate more in sport, notwithstanding the dangers inherent in it, because the chronic obesity crisis, you know, that we have ongoing, which is very seldom spoken about now, but it, it is endemic in the country. So there is a balancing act to be borne in mind. You know, people, that, there's dangers in everything we do every day. I'm not dismissing anything lightly. I'm just saying that we should be encouraging young people to be participate in sport and don't be afraid. There are uh, plenty safeguards. I played football in the 60s and 70s where you'd have to break a person's leg before they were sent off on the pitch. So, I mean, it has completely changed, you know, the whole nature of the game. The officials, the referees, the protocols are very, very good and secure. OK. OK, thank you for that. Uh, anybody over here? Yeah, yeah, yours. I think that... You sorry, know, just behind, just, sorry, just behind there first and I'll come to you then. I think you would be concerned. You're just, just the second row there, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. I think you would be concerned if you're involved with sport as a volunteer, as a coach or a referee, because when, you know, a player gets concussed, you know, especially, you know, at the amateur level, and, you know, if you're in the local park and so on at that, you know, or you're at the local rugby club and you're dealing with it there. Now, obviously, the strategy's in place. And, you know, in regards to rugby, the RFU have the policy and the graduated return to play and so on at that. But, you know, it, it is when you're a volunteer, it's different like yesterday at the Ireland-Italy game, you know, when you have all the officials and everything in place. So there is a bit of a concern. Yeah, that's a, it's a big responsibility on, on people who maybe don't have the, the training or expertise for it. Uh, did you want to, to contribute yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. sport is Olympic handball, so the concern was a goalkeeper because obviously they shoot at the goal and the goalkeeper might be in the way. They get hit in the face, hit in the head. There was some study done by the Swiss Federation. They put an accelerometer on a headband and they find a higher ratio uh, rate of concussion. And the National Federation brought in new rules to protect the goalkeeper, so responsibility is on the player to avoid absolutely to hit the goalkeeper. So if you hit the face of the goalkeeper, it's an instant red card for the, for the players. And that's going to have a significant... That's because it's like that's they keep the, the, the shooter trying to avoid shoot around the head, right? So they should okay. try to shoot somewhere else, yeah. Okay, and it's, uh, yeah, and it's, it's good to, to, that we talk about all the sports. I think there's a, there has been a lot of emphasis on rugby in particular in this. Can I bring you into this just at this point, uh, Professor Doherty? Can you just explain to people what does an impact, the kind of impacts that people can get any weekend uh, in, a, in a team sport, what does that do to the brain? So I think it's worth defining concussion first so everyone's all clear what we're talking about and it comes from a latin word concutere which is to shake violently it's not actually an impact that didn't derive the word is actually shake which is important when it comes to understanding what the brain goes through and it's a transient uh, alteration in the brain function resulting from a biomechanical force either directly or indirectly to the brain or spine so that's the definition now when i talk to medical students or or indeed coaches about what happens to the brain, I usually bring in a tin of peeled tomatoes, right? And the reason I do that is because the tin represents the skull. The peeled tomato is the brain. That is what the brain is like. If you reach into that tin and pull out that, and pulp that brain, that's what it's like. If you go in, reach into your brain now, 
you can pull it and pulp it like you could as peeled tomato. So what I do then is I take the tin and I throw it up in the air and wait for it to hit the ground. And I ask everyone, what do people think is happening to that very delicate object? And that's, the, that's what's happening. The brain is going through, it's filled, it's surrounded by fluid, and it's impacting. Uh, you know, it's, it's having an impact on the structure and function of that, of that uh, tissue, which is very, very delicate. It's not a rubber ball, right? That's the, <laughs> the most important thing to, to, to understand about it. There's no rubberiness uh, in the human brain. So th what we know now is that, that repeated blows to this structure cause significant immediate medium-term and long-term problems. The science is there, we know it's there, and people say, look, there, there are risks to everything. There's the obesity crisis, there's risks. But what is precisely the risk? That's the question. We don't actually know. We can't talk to adults about what actually their risk is. And when it comes to children, you know, who is bearing that risk, the duty of care? Who's bearing the risk of children? What do you tell a parent your risk? Do they know, for instance, that 30% of people who get a concussion still have symptoms at three months? How does that affect their, their educational? Do they know that about 5% of people still have symptoms at a year? You know what I mean? Is this information being given to people? That's a really important question. Okay, and we will come back to that question very soon, but thank you for that. Because I want to bring in Laurie Ryan now. You're very welcome, Laurie. Now, you know a lot about concussion now yourself from your own personal experience. Take me back to May 2020. It was a club league final. What happened? Um, so basically I was playing um, the match and I banged into my own player. Uh, we were both just running for a football and we collided, um, we both set up and there was actually a third girl involved from the other team as well but um, they kind of hopped up and I, I kind of was a bit groggy, um, wasn't knocked out in any way um, but the light started burning my eyes immediately um, and my manager came on and was like are you okay to play on and I just knew I, pro I probably wasn't. Um, so I said, no, I don't think I'm okay. I uh, went off to the sideline and just kind of sat there and spoke to a few people. We, we won the match and I drove home. Um, and, and did anyone say to you, maybe you shouldn't be driving? Yeah, so my family were actually at the match and they remember how ghostly I was when I set up after the bang. Um, so it kind of traumatised them, I think, a bit more than anyone else. But they kind of came up to me afterwards and said, will we drive you home? And I said, I think I'm okay. But other than that, no one kind of really realised, I suppose, what was wrong with me because I was still able to sit down and chat and I hadn't been knocked out, so they probably just thought it was a, a bit of a bang. It was actually your boyfriend from text messages realised there was something yeah. seriously awry. So I, I went home and I lived with my nana at the time and she actually hated me playing sports because I used to always get injured um, and it would be cuts and bruises, but um, I texted him and said, I'm just going to head back to Dublin now. I got a bang in the head and I wasn't feeling great because um, I was working up in Dublin. And he just replied, you need to tell your nana straight away, um, you're not spelling anything right, I don't think you're okay. So they, they made me get the train to work um, the next day and I actually ended up having to leave work because I couldn't concentrate, I couldn't really sit there and I was finding everything giving me headaches and um, I, I left and I, I ended up not going back then for the foreseeable. <laughs> because actually as the days went on, your symptoms got worse and worse and it wasn't just the, the symptoms we normally associate with concussion. No, so it was two days later I was walking up the stairs and I got a really bad headache and I was out of breath and um, I was just constantly tired. I had this like fog over me. Um, I know that's something that people say but until you actually live it, it's, it's really tough going and I was very agitated easily. There was, the, the list was nearly endless at that point um, and I went to a walk-in doctor and he told me to rest. And I rested for another week after that and there was still no improvement. So I went to my, my local doctor um, and he at the time actually in passing kind of yeah. mentioned a, a physio for concussion. Um, and I was, I was kind of seeing my, my county physio in between and they were all telling me to rest and I'd get better. But I just I knew I wasn't getting better. So I ended up going to a specialist who then um, kind of advised me to go to a physio after testing and... Um, that's when I started to see small improvements, but it, it took up to three months. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, so after about three months, you did manage, you started to gradually... So I went back playing, yeah, so um, I gradually started to introduce kind of kind of running um, on my own, um, maybe a little bit of lifting the weight here and there, um, and as long as it wasn't able to give me symptoms, then I, I was improving, but a lot of my exercises in the physio uh, were just focusing on moving my eyes, that, that was my biggest problem, I couldn't sit down in a room with my nana and my mam and see them have a conversation because my eyes couldn't handle moving between the two of them. So it, you did get setbacks again? 
Yeah, so even after I went back playing, I suppose three months later, I, I kind of felt under pressure, I suppose, to go back playing because I was captain of Clare at the time and there was kind of a guilt over me that I wasn't playing and you kind of have a bit of sign off yourself in, in, in certain aspects and I, I did get signed off by the doctor but I, I ended up having to go to council and then a couple of months after it because um, it was just all really playing on my mind. I was still very anxious and I, I, I just was kind of feeling that sadness still a, a long time afterwards so I ended up stepping back from Clare then for, for a while to kind of gather myself and nearly work on getting my, myself back to 100% before I'd commit to anything again. Can I ask you, were you shocked at the impact of that one knock that you got? Like, did you have an awareness? Or, you know, you're an inter-county player, so you would think at your level, this is something that you would be aware of? Yeah, so I, I probably wasn't um, aware of the, the impacts it could have had on my daily life. Like, I never thought I'd have to leave work and not be able to work. Um, I think I, I never thought I wouldn't be able to have a conversation with my family either. So they were kind of things that I found really difficult. And it's very hard to be in a room on your own a lot and not be able to go on your TV or your phone or anything. So there was a lot going on and you, you wouldn't really think about that. Um, I know one of my friends in college had got a concussion and ended up having to take a semester out. And at the time, that I kind of probably didn't read into it too much or, or educate myself. Um, but now I feel like if I'd known then what I know now, I'd been in a much better place, but um, I, I just didn't really know enough. And I know you think that there just isn't enough awareness, particularly at club level. Yeah, like on the day when I got concussed, we, well, I don't think we had a physio or, or a doctor available. Obviously, like not all clubs are going to be in a position to have it, especially at all age groups. Um, and I think that was something that probably was why I drove home, potentially. Um, also, like I drove home and my club didn't really realise that I was I was that bad until someone met my stepdad down the town and he told them that I was off work for a week and a half and they kind of couldn't believe it at the time. But um, yeah, there just isn't the, the kind of same level of education. Now I'm lucky, obviously, since my case in the club, everyone stood up and took note and any time there's even a hint of something wrong with a player, they, they would contact me to see where the, I went and what I did. And the same with a lot of people in Clare, actually, they, they would contact me and it's good that people know, obviously, but I think there's still a lot to be done in the education terms for, for all the levels, underage up to senior level and club level. OK, OK. Laurie, thank you so much for coming in and telling us your story. Uh, and I'm glad to see you. you are feeling a lot better now. Yeah, back playing now, so it's great. <laughs> OK, great. Cool.